So Tiago, I know uh, you worked in uh, so many companies, especially Apple and, and Amex, very big American companies. And uh, before that, you worked in small company startup. Now you're going back to kind of a startup. So I want to know, uh, what is your leadership philosophy? What does it mean to you? Okay, that that's a, is a great question. And before I answer that, I just want to go back on, because you, you touched on a really important point about learning English. And for folks that are in the U.S., for folks that have done graduation or master's here, you, you almost take that for granted, right? But at the time, I was maybe 23 or 24 years old. And I, I did a lot of crazy things to learn English. And one of the, the probably craziest things that I, I used to do was I used to drive every weekend, five hours to see my, my girlfriend at the time. And I would be listening to podcasts in English for five hours straight on the on Friday evening when I would go and on uh, Monday morning when I would come. I would, I would at maybe after 10 minutes, I would not understand. I'm not going to be able to follow anything because it was too above my level. But at some point, that thing clicked. And I was like, pushing and pushing and pushing. And it's, it's crazy when like you want something, that if you put enough effort and if you have people around you helping you and taking kind of like, like giving you opportunities, right? Uh, and having, let's say another thing that was huge for me was having folks from different uh, cultures that also didn't have English as their first language is struggling with me. I remember all the all the, the folks from China that were in Brazil that were struggling so much with both English and Portuguese. And having that environment where you're not the only one that's behind and you're kind of pushing yourself really, I mean, helped me to, to do something that is, is really hard to do. learn a language after kind of like you're already adult, like is, mm -hmm. is really, really tough. But okay, talking about leadership philosophy, I think I have, I have a lot of philosophies on that, but I think the the first one, the, the, the one that most inspired me when I read, and I try, I try to talk on how I apply that, is the good to great level five leadership from uh, Jim Collins. I don't know if you heard about that. Mm -hmm. And he has yeah. this analogy that I think is the, the best analogy and is what I try to do. It's, he calls the window and the mirror. So the best leaders, they look at the mirror when something goes bad, and they look at the window when something goes well. So it's like, it's mm -hmm. almost like if something goes bad under your org, under your leadership, you look at yourself for, for introspection, for see what you could have done different. If something goes well, mm -hmm. you look at everybody else, the environment, and you try to appreciate things, mm -hmm. even if you had like a, a small fraction of things there, mm -hmm. but you, you actually, you, you give credit to, to folks that were with you on that journey. So right. that tells a lot about my philosophy behind it. And, like is I would say is a lot about several several leadership. That's like my style is I'm here to help. I'm here to to serve you guys, and not the other way. Is that like I don't see anyone that reports to me as inferior or like oh you report to me, therefore I know more than you. No, I try to cultivate an environment where everybody is treated as a peer of mine because I think a peer to peer relationship is the best kind of relationship you have. Mm -hmm. The moment you have someone that's like okay I. I mean, I know more, I'm kind of superior than you. You start to, to lose that kind of like exchange you have with people that are the same level. Mm -hmm. So I try to kind of like almost uh, remove myself from that uh, position of power or like, oh, I'm kind of like here, but more I'm a facilitator. I'm a kind of like, I'm an agent that's trying to like, like enable the team to deliver more or like, make sure that folks are feeling excited about things. Make sure that even if that means that they are leaving my org, they're moving to different companies or they're moving to different roles, right? My job as a leader is to kind of like, one, find out what is the biggest potential of each one that reports to me, find out when things are not going well and right. try to like course, course uh, correct things and put them on the right track. Of course, that's not always possible all the time. If you are on a project, on a deadline, you might want to kind of like say, okay, maybe for the next three, six months, I'm not going to be able to move, I'm not going to be able to do this, but this is the plan. Do you agree? And I think it's a lot of transparency, a lot of like collaboration. I think that's like in 
the the final thing Rafa, that I want to say is I try also to break this I'm engineering, I'm product, I'm designer, I'm QA, I'm DevOps. I try to really almost like make my team believe that it's almost to a point where folks don't know who reports to me, who reports to, to, to other uh, director or to other Mm-hmm. Is like I really believe that like a really good uh, cross-functional club collaborative environment is an environment where you don't have kind of like oh you are QA you are but people are mixing up that kind of like their expertise or who, who they report to is almost uh, kind of like it does it doesn't make a difference right right, right. blur the boundaries right yeah no these are this is this is very good uh, so same on the same line. Uh, you already talked about how to be a good leader as such. 